Okay, this is part two of this compound machine design. And again, I wanted to go through a few things um, about it now that uh, I'm not actually in class. So again, uh, before in the first video, we looked at this in terms of um, everything that was a chain sprocket or the gear system or the uh, belt and pulley drive on the back side here. Um, all of those uh, systems we treated the force acting on the axle and that force getting multiplied um, on the secondary axle so in by looking at forces on axles we can use the ratio of either the pulleys or the gear train or the chain and sprocket we can use those ratios if we're looking from axle to axle of our device the other way to look at this is actually treating everything as mostly a wheel and axle which uh, some, some people have emailed me and they've pointed that out and that's kind of what the second part of the video is about is to, to get to the, de or the description of why and how um, to do that. So, um, for example, if I use this right here as my, uh, my wheel, uh, the force from here um, is then going to be uh, transmitted to the outside, to the teeth on this um, sprocket that's right here. And actually on the first video, that sprocket uh, was labeled a 16 tooth, but it's actually a 15 tooth. I'm not getting any younger and I couldn't read the the number that's actually on the back side here and I didn't take the time to go get another one. So it's actually 15 teeth. Changes the mechanical advantage um, a little bit on my example in the previous video, but um, anyway, that's beside the point. But what's happening is the force um, from this wheel then is then changed to a different force um, at this axle. And the reason is is because again the torques have to be equal if we think about um, the process. This force is a greater distance away um, so because of that the force that's a smaller distance away is going to be greater than what it is out here. So I can treat this as my wheel and this is my axle and I can use diameters. So if I'm doing that, if this was a two inch handle, the diameter of that would be four inches. So in my calculation now, um, if I'm looking at my paper, I can then start over. I'm going to start a new problem here. Um, so the IMA of that first wheel and axle is going to be the diameter of the effort over the diameter of the resistance. The effort is put um, at the four inch spot. So again, it's out here. So I'm going to put that right in the top here. So it's four inches. And then if I measure this, I believe that this uh, diameter of this bracket is three quarters of an inch. And I guess I could take a caliper here. Let me do that. Yeah, three quarters of an inch uh, is what that bracket is there. So, um, so I'll put three quarters here. So that value, uh, when I do that um, and get a mechanical advantage for that wheel and axle, is going to be 5.33 on that. So now the force is 5.33 times greater at this point. Well now we can't just use the sprocket ratio like we would in the previous video. The reason is is because the force is now on the tooth. That force is transmitted through this chain. So if let's say for example I apply uh, one newton of force here. I'm going to get 5.33 newtons of force on the tooth which is going to put 5.33 newtons of force on the chain which is going to put 5.33 newtons of force on the tooth of this sprocket. Now how does that make it any better? Well if you go to the next wheel and axle system which if you look up here we can treat this second one as a wheel and axle. The force is now 5.33 newtons up here and it's going to an axle which is smaller. So what's it going to do there? It's going to multiply the force again. So we're going to see how much it multiplies this time. So again we measure diameters. So if I take my caliper out and I measure diameters here It's 
basically a one inch diameter. So again, IMA2 is going to be DE over DR. Our effort is now placed here, so that would be a one inch diameter. And then this little guy right here is um, basically a half inch diameter there. And again, it's it's tough to tell because again, on a gear, the it's the force is not placed on the outside of the tooth. It's actually somewhere in uh, the middle of the tooth. So it's it comes out 0.557 on my on my caliper, but I'm gonna I think it's supposed to be right in the middle um, of that. So I think it's around a half an inch. Um, so that mechanical advantage then is two. And again, this is going to be a little bit rougher number for us than just counting teeth. Now let's think about physically what's going on. So let's let's review. Let's just say this is five newtons for the sake of simplicity. If this is a five newton force acting on this, what's the force acting on the smaller one now? Well, if it's half the diameter um, and the torques are equal, then I'm going to have twice the force out of this. So I have a ten newton force on this tooth. And that 10 newton force by Newton's third law does what to push on this tooth of this particular gear? Well, Newton's third law says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I put 10 newtons of force on from that gear, it's then going to push 10 newtons of force on this tooth. Well, same thing here. 10 newtons on these teeth, I'm going to get 10 newtons on these teeth. So this larger gear here is going to have 10 newtons of force on the teeth on the outside of it. Okay, so now we're doing another wheel and axle. So here's our wheel now, and our axle is on the back side right here on this pulley. So here's our third mechanism, treating this again as a wheel with an axle. So how do we find our mechanical advantage of that? Same way. So if we're looking down here at the paper. Sorry, I have to mirror this so you can see it a little bit better. Everything's messing up. Okay, here we go. So now you can see me do some work. So there's the second one. Let's do the third. We have IMA3. Again, it's distance effort over distance resistance. In this case, our wheel. So we want our wheel diameter. It's going to measure that here for us. and that looks like it's 2.5 inches and then that little pulley is a three quarter inch pulley that, I, that I've cut for the diameter on it. So 2.5 uh, divided by 3 times 4 so this one is 3.33 for that mechanical advantage. Now looking back at my system Now I'm right here. So now I'm putting that force on this. Again, it's going to multiply the whatever force was here on this tooth. It's going to be multiplied out here. That's transmitted through the belt. And then it's placed on the outside of this pulley, this larger pulley. And that pulley, again, you can treat as another wheel and axle. So how far away is the Sorry, I'm trying to get a good view here. How far away is the force of the effort? Well, it's from the pivot point out to the rim of the pulley. And then where's the resistance? Well, again, if this is a wheel and axle, we can treat this as the force is on the axle, the smaller piece, and the resistance, or the effort's on the axle, and the resistance is going to be out here on the wheel part because, again, it's the larger piece of the setup. So I'm going to measure the distance from there to there. Now, this is a diameter, and this I have to make a diameter. So whatever I measure for the radius of this arm, the length of this arm, I've got to double it to make it a diameter so it's consistent. Okay, so I'm going to do that, do a quick measurement, and then we'll put it down on the paper, and we'll see what we come out with. So. IMA4, again it's another wheel and axle, distance of effort over distance resistance, 
this time my effort is on the uh, the big pulley which is the axle and I believe this is a three inch yep it's a three inch diameter axle and that lever arm has a radius of 2.5 inches so again I'm losing mechanical advantage going from an axle back up to a wheel, uh, wheel. so it should be um, less than one here so three uh, divided by five so I get a value of 0 0.6 okay so those are all my mechanisms and if I were to multiply all those together 5.333 times 2 times 3.333 and then times 0.6 I get a value of 21.3 for my ideal mechanical advantage and again that number is going to be slightly different than the other number just because of the fact of our measurements um, aren't quite as precise um, because of the fact of where those forces are placed on those items so I hope that helps um, with some of your understanding of how to calculate mechanical advantage in two different ways using a compound machine setup like that.